if you're the sort of player that makes a lot of silly mistakes and just gives your opponent free points, then I'm gonna help you with that in this video by showing you how to train and work on two of the biggest underlying problems that cause players to make silly mistakes. Now, it's not a particular coaching point. I don't have any magic tip that's gonna instantly make you more consistent. We're gonna go a little bit kind of deeper than that. We're gonna be looking at your level of focus because often you know what you're supposed to do. You just lose focus and miss the shot. And we're also gonna be talking about decision-making because so many mistakes come from players just choosing a completely inappropriate shot. I hope you find the video helpful. If you do, it'd be great if you give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel before, really appreciate it if you could do that as well. When you first start playing and you're really learning to play tennis, making mistakes is part of it. You're learning different techniques. But if you've been playing for a period of time and you've reached a certain level, a lot of the mistakes that players make just come from not doing the things that they know they're supposed to do, basically just losing concentration. And it can happen in a number of areas, but for the vast majority of players, it's just lifting their head, not quite watching the ball onto the strings, and just making silly mistakes because of it. So in order to address that, we have to work on our ability to improve our focus. And in terms of focus, it is controlled by specific brain areas. We're talking about the frontal lobe and kind of the prefrontal cortex. And the way this works is if the parts of the brain that deal with focus aren't working at a sufficiently high level or we can't get enough energy to them, that's when players are going to have a tendency to have lapses in concentration, to lose focus and make silly mistakes. So that's what we're going to be looking at in this video. And we're also going to be looking at it from the decision-making perspective because, again, if you are routinely going for shots that you can't execute, then we've got to ask the question why. Now, we're not talking about a lack of technical, tactical awareness. If you don't know what shot to hit in specific situations, that's a different thing. You need to kind of start to study tactics and understand that side of things. Here, I'm talking about players that know what they should be doing. They know that when they get pulled out wide, they should be getting more topspin on the ball, getting it deep cross court so they can recover and get in a better position. Or we're talking about understand, you know, players that understand that they can't crush high forehands, but they lack the discipline to not go for that shot over and over again. If you keep on doing things and executing, trying to hit shots that you can't hit and missing them, we're asking the question, why? And again, this comes down to decision making. It is controlled by specific areas within the brain. And if those parts of the brain don't function at a sufficiently high level, or we can't get enough energy to those parts of the brain, it's really gonna basically cause you to go for the wrong shot and make silly mistakes and donate your opponent's points. So what we're gonna be looking at are some simple training drills because they're very similar parts of the brain. So I'm gonna show you a couple of different training drills to target these parts of the brain, and then talking about how you might need to work on things to address the energy, energy utilization issue. So to train and improve the function in the parts of the brain that deal with focus and that deal with decision making, um, there are a number of different things that we could do, but one of the, the best things that we can work on is gonna be the quality of your eye movements because these parts of the brain are also heavily involved in eye movements. The added bonus is that by improving your eye movements, it's gonna improve your ball tracking, your ability to read the ball, your ability to judge distance and depth so you can have better timing. So really, it's a win-win in terms of your tennis. So I just wanna show you a couple of really simple but opposite drills and I'll talk more about that in a moment. The first one we're going to work on is fast eye switching. So I'm using two balls as a target. I'm just using the letter or the sorry the number in the logo. I'm going to try and keep my head still and I'm going to switch between those two targets. I'm just switching backwards and forth. Now when I do this I should be keeping my head still but often when I'm doing this sort of thing and talking at the same time I'm not concentrating and my head moves but it should be as still as possible and I'm just switching between the two targets. Now I'm not sure how well you can see my eyes because of the sun but my eyes are going from side to side and I'm making sure that I can see the target nice and clearly before I switch. And I can do this really quickly but you might find that it takes you a little bit of time. You have to wait for a second or so before the thing that you're looking at becomes clear. So that's gonna be one of the things that you actually work on because vision training, eye movement training is like any other type of great training. It has to be progressive over time. So we're gonna work on doing faster and faster, more accurate eye switches. We're also gonna build up the number. So initially, maybe we start with 10, 20 switches in each direction, but to really train these systems, 
and make them more robust so that they can handle longer matches and greater, have greater endurance, we might want to really build up the number of switches that we do. We also want to potentially do lots of different directions. So as a minimum, I would say left and right, or horizontal, vertical, and the diagonals, and that will cover all our bases in terms of the brain areas and the eye muscles and some of the other stuff. But that's our first exercise, saccades or fast eye switches. For our second exercise, I'm going to be using a pen this time as my target because I want a smaller target because I'm going to work on gaze fixation, holding my focus on a target for a period of time. So the exact opposite of what we've just done. Now, our eyes naturally move around. They never stay completely still. They're constantly moving. So by training our ability to keep our eyes fixed in a certain position, although it doesn't seem like we do it as much in tennis because the ball is moving, it is a really, really powerful training tool. And when we look at the research, it can be really important for you know focus, concentration, decision-making, and that side of things. So I'm just gonna be focusing on the tip of the pen. I'm gonna start holding it directly in front just keep my eyes locked on the tip of the pen. If your eyes want to drift off, you have to bring them back. And again, this is something that we're gonna to wanna to progress. So maybe I start as with five seconds and eventually build it to 10 seconds and just increase the length over time. We also want to do this in lots of different positions as well. So as a bare minimum, I'm gonna say, you know, eight points of the compass. So out in front, plus the eight points, you know, down and left, up and right, down and right, up and left, left, right, up, down, all those different directions, increasing our length of time and increasing the quality of our ability of a, and ability to keep our eyes fixed in position. Now, they're opposite eye movements and often you might need to work on one more than another because all these brain areas kind of talk together and everything kind of functions together. If one isn't working and the other one's working really well, we actually need to kind of create balance. So there are simple assessments and things that we can do to try and figure out which one you might need to target, but just without doing those assessments, just training both of them is normally gonna be an effective strategy. But two very simple drills that if you practice them consistently and work on them and build on them, um, it can be really beneficial for both your focus and your decision making.